alcohol. When you're a teenager, it sounds like fun, doesn't it? But there can be a darker side. Binge drinking, fights, abuse, addiction, health problems. Did you know alcohol can actually cause severe brain damage if it's misused? And the government spends over $15 billion a year on the after effects of alcohol. So it's great news that we have places like Hollyoke, which has been a leading provider of drug and alcohol treatment services for over 35 years. And today, I'm going to check out just what they do. I'll be talking to one of Hollyoke's young counsellors. And I'm off to check out the effects that alcohol can have on your brain and your body. So Tegan, this room looks like fun. What's it used for? It is used for having fun. It's used to help children express their emotions and feelings and process some of the difficult situations that they've been in in their lives. And what are some of the typical signs of a problem user? If it's a problem for you or it's causing problems in your life, then it's a problem. But anything like um, hiding your use, not being able to go out without using substances, probably a problem. What's the message you're trying to promote here at Hollyoak? We're promoting a message of self-responsibility, so helping people to understand that they're in control of what it is that they're doing, and we don't tell people what to do. We help them to come up with what it is that their goals are and work towards those goals. What is it with young people and binge drinking these days? There's a culture around binge drinking in Australia. Um, there's maybe some peer pressure, there's some learning that people see other people going out and binge drinking and thinking that that's the thing to do. So we've got a program at Hollyoak called the Young Adults Program, specifically for people 18 to 24, to help them to talk about some of those issues that they face, some of the peer pressures, um, and starting to form their identities and who is it that they want to be and how do they want to be behaving. And at Hollyoak, are you fully against alcohol? No, not at all. We talk about self-responsibility here at Hollyoak and encourage people to moderate their drinking and we come from a harm minimisation perspective. Well thank you so much for your time Tegan, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. No worries. Thanks Beck and Tegan, now I'm joined by Sunny, he's one of the counsellors here at Hollyoak. So Sunny, what are some of the situations you see people in when it comes to alcohol use? Well a lot of times young people are using uh, alcohol in order to have a good time uh, and it becomes a bit of a crutch when perhaps they can do it a different way. Like kicking the footy, playing Nintendo? Yeah, other ways to let off steam. But it's not just personal use is it? It's, you know, it's our friends and family doing it around us? Oh definitely, yeah, people have varied uh, relationships with drug and alcohol through their brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and Hollyoak gives them a place to talk about those situations and relationships. You don't just deal with people coming in and you know counselling them, you deal with actually people in jail as well. How, how does that go? Oh well that's when people have sort of got into problems. Uh, they've started out having a good time on drugs and alcohol. They end up in jail and that's when I see them. And so what's the Hollyoak approach? Well I guess I see the Hollyoak approach as a holistic approach that looks at the person within their environment and their relationships, uh, doesn't blame them for their use and allows them to think about how they want their lives to be. So what are some of the benefits to someone that would open up to Hollyoak? Oh, there's a lot of benefits. Uh, I think it's to really like themselves again, uh, to look at their good qualities, decide what they want out of life and go for it. Well, I reckon one of the benefits of Hollyoak is that you've got a Nintendo Wii just over there, so I reckon we should have a game of tennis. OK, I bet you've got no chance. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jesse and Sunny. While you've been having a chat about the social impacts of alcohol, I'm getting my science on. And I'm here with Jade from Hollyoke. I'm looking at some gear. I'm confused, I don't know what we're doing. Talk me through it. Absolutely. Well, in order to start, what I want you to do is crack two eggs into the two glasses here. Science, I love it. Okay, what now? Right, so we've got a glass of water. It is water, yes. And pour it into one of the eggs. Here we go. Done. And we've got a bottle of gin into the other glass. Gotcha. Let's just measure it out carefully. 30 mils, 60 mils. Yep, that will do it. Now, what does this demonstrate to us? The white part of the egg is very similar to the protein in our brain. The reason why our brain has shape and structure and basically does what we want it to do is because of this protein. So when we pour alcohol into ourselves and then it goes to our brain, we run the risk of not making those connections and those linkages. So the alcohol is affecting the egg very similarly to the way it would affect our brains when we drink. That's right. It will basically turn to mush. Scramble it. It will. Wow, it will scramble it. That's awesome. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, Jade. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. What does this mean for someone's developing brain? The brain continues to develop up until the age of 28. So when you consume alcohol up until that age, 
basically those links and the structure of the brain can be at risk. Wow, so that can affect someone's, I'm guessing, memory, motor skills, that sort of thing, and basically maybe the rest of their life. Exactly, that's right. Actually, just on that, I have another demonstration I want to show you. Oh, I'm loving this science stuff, let's go. Hans, what is it that you drink? I don't mind a scotch every now and then. Yeah, and what mm. glass would you use? Well, I'd use this one. Okay, so pour me a scotch. What I think a standard scotch is? Yeah, well, what you would normally pour. Here we go. How many standard drinks do you think this would be? One and a bit, one and one a half and a maybe. Bit. Yeah. Should we have a look? So what we have here is a measuring glass that measures standard drinks. A standard drink of spirits is 30 mils. So what we have here? Is a standard drink? One standard drink. Oh, no way, I was way off. Two. Ugh. Three. Probably about three and a half. Three and a bit, okay. Three and a bit. Right. That could be bad, okay. Well, let's check out if I wanted to have a beer. Right. Which glass would you choose? Definitely that one. Right. So pour me a beer. Okay. So say I'm at a pub, I order a beer, I'm going to get... Yep, you got it. I'm going to get that much, basically. You got a pint of beer. Of course I That's right. Now, how many standard drinks in this one? Uh, one and a half, again, I reckon. One and a half? Yeah. So for heavy beer, it's 285 mils. So that's right. one standard drink. No way. And I tell you what, you are almost dead on the money. I was for close. two standard drinks. No Just short of two standard drinks. Again, so what I'm doing is I am by far underestimating the amount of alcohol in my liquid. That's right. So I like a glass of wine. Do you now? Yes. Let me pour you one. That much, probably? Yeah. There you go, enjoy. So we're drinking red wine or white wine here? Red. Right. So there's 100 mils in a standard drink yep. of red wine. And that there is one. Really? That's one standard drink of wine? That's about two, maybe just over two. Ugh. So if you were to have one standard drink of wine, Right, that is way off what I thought it was going to be. Well, I've got to tell you, this is a great tool. Yeah, they are, and they are available at Hollyoak. Mm, so if you want to keep track of just how many standard drinks you are having and then maybe get behind the wheel of a car, this is the way to do it. Exactly. And actually, I've got another demonstration for you. Let's do it. All right, Jade, final demo. I'm pumped, but what am I doing? Right, so what I have here are fatal vision goggles. These represent different blood alcohol content. What I want you to do is put them on and walk this straight line. Whoa, okay. Where is the line? This... So how many lines are you seeing, Hans? <laughs> of that three. This is... Hang on, there we go. <laughs> yeah, find it. Am I close? I was close, yes. right? Yes. These are giving me a headache. What do they right. do? Well, what did you find that they did? Well, they kind of made things blurry and a little bit cross-eyed, and I thought the line was to my left, but it wasn't. It was super bizarre. Mm, which is similar to when we drink alcohol. So when we consume alcohol, we do get a little bit more blurry. Our motor skills are not as great. We can't walk in a straight line. Can't drive a car. That would be very dangerous like that. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you so much for all these demonstrations you've been walking me through. What I get is that alcohol does have a profound effect on your brain and your motor skills. Yep, absolutely, exactly. Oh, you're the best, thank you so much. Thank you. Look, it's a bit bright out here. I might, can I just borrow them? Yeah. Thanks for it. Right. Right. Okay, cool, see ya. Well, while Hans fumbles his way out of there, I just want to say that if you or anyone you know is affected by alcohol or drugs, make sure you contact Hollyoak. There's no reason to feel alone. The simple fact is, if you do nothing, problems can get worse. Mm. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Just take a seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Man, imagine driving like that. That is dangerous. Yeah. Give it a go. Oh, God. Just look. Whoa. Mm. Uh, no, don't, no, don't like that. Hey, no. if you do need some confidential and friendly advice or support, contact the team here at Hollyoak. Hollyoak.org.au.